So far, we've tested over 30 different robot vacuums. Most of them pick up surface level debris much the same because they have a very similar design. Almost all of the robot vacuums we tested have a single brush roll that's the same approximate length and width with flaps and bristles to help pick up debris. Almost all of them have a side brush or two that helps pull debris from the perimeter of the robot into the path of this brush roll. There is some variance in the measured airflow and suction of the robot vacuums we tested, but robots with exceptionally high airflow and suction don't really pick up surface level debris much better than those that don't. And robots with exceptionally low airflow and suction usually have a unique design element that offsets it. This is true for most iRobot robot vacuums, for example. Many have low tested airflow and suction, but they have two brush rolls instead of one. The extra agitation provided by the extra brush roll makes up for their low measured airflow and suction. Most robot vacuums are also programmed to repeat movement over the same areas multiple times over the course of a single cleaning cycle. Any debris they don't pick up on the first pass is easily picked up over later passes. This narrows the gap even further between low power models and high power models when it comes to surface level debris pickup. Indeed, most of the robot vacuums we tested performed very similarly picking up surface level debris in both our carpet and hard floor stress test. This was not the case in our carpet deep clean test. In this test, in which we run each robot three times over a patch of carpet embedded with 30 grams of fine debris, we did see a considerable difference in performance between all of the different models we tested. Performance in this test is dependent on some combination of airflow, suction, and the robot's general design. Notice again how iRobot Roombas performed well in this test because of their extra brush roll and in spite of their low measured airflow and suction. Certain models of robot vacuums we tested also performed better than others in our hard floor crevice test. In this test in which we let the robot run over debris trapped in a crevice 20 times to evaluate how well it's able to seal to the floor and pull debris out of the crevice, most models performed quite poorly, though there were a few outliers that are noted here. Certain models also cleaned edges better than others. Some models, like Eufy random pathing robots, for example, have unique movements programmed as part of their standard cleaning cycle to help with edge debris pickup. Most other robots rely on parallel movement close to the edge for edge debris pickup, though many don't get sufficiently close to the edge during this movement to pick up edge debris properly, and so received a lower score in this test than others. We also saw a difference in performance between different models in our human hair pickup testing. All models were able to pick up the longer hair used for this test, but some models had brush rolls that tangled much less easily with the hair than others, and so were able to pull more of the hair into their dust bins than others. Some models also had brush rolls that were easier to detangle longer hair from than others. There was also a notable difference between the performance of different models in our pet hair pickup testing. Most models were able to pick up and pull all of the shorter hair used for this test into their dustbins without issue, though there were several models that struggled in this test, pushing the tufts of hair around on the test surface and getting them caught underneath the robot instead of pulling them all the way through into their dustbins. These differences in debris pickup were significant, but by far the biggest difference we saw between the different models of robot vacuums we tested was in how well they could navigate. We tested each robot's navigation in two different environments, an empty room and a cluttered room. We first tested each robot in an empty room to get a good idea of how well it could navigate in general, in wide open spaces, and around edges. We then tested each robot in a cluttered room to see how well it could navigate in tight spaces and around different types of obstacles like table legs and chair legs. Certain models performed considerably better than others in these tests. Some models failed to cover whole areas of our test environment. Others failed to get coverage around or underneath certain obstacles. We saw the most variance in coverage over the area underneath the chair frame. Many robots struggled cleaning in and around this area. We also evaluated the mapping abilities of each robot. Many random pathing robots we tested couldn't even be controlled via an app, much less generate a map to send to its companion app. Most gyroscope robots were able to generate a map, but you couldn't really interact with the map. You couldn't label the map or set clean zones or keep out zones on the map. Most camera and all of the LiDAR robots we tested were able to generate an interactive map. These are the only robots we consider to be full-fledged mapping robots. 
and we found their mapping ability to be extremely useful in real-world testing. Almost all robot vacuums bump into and away from larger, immovable objects, but run right over, push around, or get stuck on smaller obstacles. Only mapping robots generate a map of the area they clean with the option of keeping the robot out of certain areas of that map. So you can set keep out zones for areas with smaller obstacles like power cords, dog bowls, even light rugs that the robot may push around or get stuck on. Non-mapping robots, that is all random pathing robots and gyroscope robots, do not have this functionality. You have to physically remove or alter these obstacles before the robot cleans, or you need to set physical boundaries around them. Many, though not all non-mapping robots are compatible with magnetic strips or devices that shoot out an infrared beam that limit the robot's movement. However, these solutions are much less elegant and much more difficult to implement than the software-based no-go zones of mapping robots, and so we much prefer the latter option. In order to round out our evaluation of these robots, we also looked at battery life, dustbin size, and noise output. Generally, cheaper robots have less battery life than more expensive robots, though there are some outliers. Certain brands also make battery life much more of a priority than others. Dustbin size really doesn't correlate to price, though certain brands once again prioritize this feature more than others. Noise output correlates heavily with airflow and suction, which can be adjusted on most robots by adjusting the suction setting in the companion app for these robots. Certain robots do not give you the ability to adjust suction, and so they can only be run on one suction setting that may be much louder than the lower suction settings of competitors. Taking all of these factors into account, including debris pickup and navigation, we can now talk about the specific models we recommend as the best robot vacuums on the market. Not one model we tested was able to perform perfectly in all of our tests, so we had to narrow down the most important features we were going to look for, and we settled on these requirements. The best robot vacuum needed to use LiDAR to navigate, be a mapping robot, and have good general pickup ability without any major issues. LiDAR navigation was critical. We tested several camera and several LiDAR robots from several different manufacturers and found that the best LiDAR robots navigate considerably better, that is to say much more precisely and more efficiently than the best camera robots. Take a look at the difference in the pathing taken by one of the best camera robots on the market versus one of the best LiDAR robots on the market. The LiDAR robot clearly navigates with much greater precision and efficiency. Being able to label rooms, divide and merge rooms, set the robot to clean specific rooms, set it to clean specific parts of rooms, and especially set it to stay out of specific parts of rooms makes a massive difference in day-to-day -day use of a robot vacuum. And so the robot vacuum we were going to pick as being the best robot vacuum would absolutely need to be a full-fledged mapping robot as well. General pickup ability was also very important as was the robot not having any major issues picking up any one type of debris, especially edge debris. At the end of the day, only one robot we tested fit all of these requirements, the Roborock S6 Max-V. It was the only robot vacuum of the 35 models we tested so far that was a LiDAR robot, a full-fledged mapping robot, and didn't have any major issues picking up debris. Earlier iterations of the S6 Max-V, like the Roborock S4, S5, and S6 Pure, all fit the first two requirements, but not the last. They all struggled picking up edge debris specifically. The latest iteration of this vacuum, the S7, also fit the first two requirements, but it too didn't meet the last. It struggled in our carpet deep clean testing. The S6 Max-V also has one additional advantage over all of these other options. It's able to detect and avoid small obstacles, regardless of whether you set keep out zones for them or not. Now the S7 specifically does put up a very good fight against the S6 Max-V, as you would expect it to since it is the latest Roborock LiDAR robot vacuum on the market. The S7 does have one big advantage over the S6 Max-V. It's compatible with the Roborock Auto Empty Dock, while the S6 Max-V is not. But again, the S7 does not deep clean carpets as well as the S6 Max-V, and is also not nearly as intelligent of a robot. It will run right over and get stuck on small obstacles like shoes and power cords. You can set no-go zones over such obstacles if they stay stationary, 
But if they randomly move around the house, as they often do, the S7, unlike the SX Max-V, will not be able to detect or avoid them, which requires you to either check the environment is clear of such obstacles before it cleans, or remove it from such obstacles when it cleans if it does get stuck on them. The S7 is also only compatible with the Roborock Auto Empty Dock. You either have to pay an additional $300 or so for the dock, or pay several hundred dollars more for the robot with the dock included, which makes it much more expensive than the S6 Max-V. So the S6 Max-V is our pick as the best robot vacuum currently on the market, even over the Roborock S7. The S7 is our pick as the best auto-empty robot vacuum on the market, as it is better than any other auto-empty options currently on the market. Its closest competitor, which is also a strong competitor to the S6 Max-V, is the Roomba J7. The J7 also detects and avoids small obstacles like the SX Max-V, but the J7 doesn't navigate nearly as well in general as either the SX Max-V or the S7. The J7 also has much less battery life and higher noise output than both the SX Max-V and S7, and it had trouble in our pet hair pickup testing while neither Roborock had any trouble in the same test. The J7 also can't mop, while both Roborocks can double as mopping robots. The J7 does have a very unique trait though. Unlike the S6 Max-V and S7, it can both detect and avoid small obstacles and self-empty. And it being able to do both goes a long way in pushing it up our robot vacuum rankings despite its shortcomings. So much so that it's currently ranked as the third best robot vacuum we tested overall. Now, all three of these options, the first ranked S6 Max-V, the second ranked S7, and the third ranked J7 are very good robot vacuums, but they all are very expensive. If you're on a more limited budget, we do have a few recommendations also. If you're trying to spend as little as possible on a robot vacuum, we recommend the Eufy 11S. The 11S is a random pathing robot with very few extra features. You can't even set it to start with an app. It comes with a physical remote control. It's not compatible with any boundary options, and it only vacuums. It can mop. But over time, it still covers the same area and it still picks up most types of debris just as well as most robots more than double its price. The Roborock E4 is sometimes as much as double the price of the 11S, but it's still considerably less expensive than top rated options like the S6 Max-V. If you're looking for more of a mid-range option, we recommend the E4. Compared to the 11S, the E4 paths more logically in a row by row pattern deep cleans carpet much better, has much better battery life, and adds app control and mopping functionality, though it is of course more expensive. Compared to top rated mapping options, it performed very similarly in most major tested categories, except for navigation. As a gyroscope robot, it doesn't navigate nearly as well as top rated LiDAR options like the S6 Max-V and S7, especially around more complex obstacles like table and chair legs. It also doesn't generate an interactive map as it cleans. It does generate a map, but you can't label rooms on the map, set it to clean certain areas of the map, or set it to stay out of certain areas of the map. You have to use physical boundaries with the E4. And that about wraps up this video on the best robot vacuum we've tested so far. We tested a lot of different robot vacuums. We conducted a myriad of different tests to see which one was the best. And these are the five that stand out as the models we can recommend over all others. See the description of this video for links to buy all of the robot vacuums we recommend in this video, and for a link to the latest updated list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend, as our recommendations may change over time as we test new robot vacuums. And thank you very much for watching.